Welcome to the Back to Brick Property Podcast. I'm your host, David Lamb. On this podcast, we'll be stripping property investors and business people alike back to brick to find out how their journey can help you on your journey. Welcome to the Back to Brick Property Show. Today, I am delighted to welcome Ollie Hindle to the show. Ollie, thanks for coming on. How are you doing, mate? Yeah, all good. Thanks, Dave. Thanks very much for getting us on today. Looking forward to it. No bother at all. So we, we started chatting on Instagram. I consider myself a busy person. I was following what you were doing on your stories, your posts, whatever, and uh, it made me feel incredibly lazy. <laughs> um, so we started chatting. We met up for a coffee. Uh, once I spoke to you over a coffee, I felt even more lazy. Um, so you've <laughs> achieved a, an incredible amount in, in a short period of time. So before we get on to that, who is who is Ollie Hindle? Who was who was Ollie before all the property stuff? Yeah, so first of all, yeah, Dave, thanks for having us on. It's good to it's good to see you and be on. So um yeah, my name's Ollie Hindle. I'm a 30-year-old property investor and developer, uh, living up in Teesside. I've I'm trying to think now, been up here for, for 10 years. So I went up to uni up in up in Newcastle and I've never never gone back to Norwich since. So yeah, haven't quite got the accent yet, but uh No. Yeah. There's a twinge of it. I think this is. Uh, I think yeah. Every people now are and then, as the years yeah. are going on, it's yeah. getting there. So yeah. um, maybe in five, ten years' time, I'll have a proper property yeah. sign. Next time we interview you, we won't recognise you. No, yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah. So, so what was it that you, that you loved about the northeast when you came up then? I think probably the people. You know, the friendly, nice people. Um, I mean, Norwich was nice, but yeah. I, is that a real thing? Because people come up here, and the, uh, the old adage is that north people from the north or northeast in, in particular are massively more friendly than, than anywhere else in the country. Is that a genuine thing, do you think? It is, mate, yeah. It, yeah. it, it genuinely is. People are more, I don't know, they're more outgoing, they're more friendly, more personable. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying people from where I grew up aren't, because that's, that's, not, that's not true. They are, they are lovely, they are nice. But, yeah, just I think you, just, you do notice it, whether it's walking your dog in the morning and people that you don't know, you're speaking to them and things like that. You might, it, yeah, it, it, it is, I do find personally that it yeah. is. It does happen is well it's nice to know to be honest and when i go to various parts of the country you know i'm i'm, um, I'm never there that long so you see a cross section of it and, and i must admit i do think oh if you go to london you know the life the, the pace is so fast down there yeah. people are less friendly but you're only there three or four days so it's only a, like a small sample of of, of the area uh, but you obviously living up here you've got a, a real insight to, to to the people of the northeast now yeah I, I found it as soon as i moved up even though living up in newcastle so yeah similar to teesside really but yeah, yeah i know it's straight away and it's yeah. probably part of one of the reasons i i stayed up here as amongst the, the property stuff but yeah. um yeah yeah no i love it love it up here Great. can't see myself going back anytime soon good Good, good to hear. Um, so your partner, she's she's from here originally. So yeah, my partner Yasmin. So she grew up in Thornaby. Fiance now, I believe. Oh, fiance, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. thanks, Dave. Yeah. Um, yeah, it only took me nine years to, <laughs> to pop the question. So uh, delayed, yeah. delayed gratification. Yeah, yeah, you could say that. Yeah. So um, yeah, been together, been together a while now. So she grew up in Thornaby, and right. her family is still there. So the move kind of to here has has been somewhat easier because yeah, she's close with her family. Yeah. Um, and things like that. So. Yeah, it works really well. We just live in Martin, our family in Thornaby. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. brilliant. Yeah, it works so well. re- ready-made support group. Move up, move up here, and her family are already, you know, ready-made support group for yourself. Yeah, 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 yeah. Literally, S- superb. Exactly. So, I touched on that, you, that you've done a lot, um, property-wise, in a short in a short space of time. But initially, what what got you into property? So yeah, it's a it's a good question, really. I mean. My, the degree that I did, Dave, was was estate management. So I had an idea back when I was thinking what to do when you are 18, what you're going to get into, what's your career going to be. So, yeah, I knew property was going to be something that I wanted to, to get involved with. So, yeah, I went to, it was Northumbria, did estate management, which generally gets you down the route of becoming a chartered surveyor in commercial property. So, yeah, I did that um, with the view that at the back end I'd have a career maybe as a chartered surveyor, um, but always had an inkling that I'd want to do my own thing. Um, but I thought if I've got a stable base, go through the degree, decent career behind me, and then in time to come, I could look to exit that. So yeah, estate management, knew kind of that I wanted to get into property, but probably knew that it wasn't going to be more trade related. I knew that I might not have the skill set or the the idea that I want, didn't want to be maybe a builder or, or a joiner. But sometimes I wish I was when you're on these sites. It would be helpful if I was more yeah, skilled. Yeah. Oh, without um, a doubt, yeah. But um, went down more of maybe the professional route um, yeah. of university and then, yeah, ended up graduating from uni and going to work for Taylor Wimpy, 
right. the house builder yeah. uh, on their graduate scheme for a few years. And then off the back of that, staying with them yeah. um, until, yeah, leaving in 2021, I believe it was. So what was your role at Taylor Wimpy? So, yeah, graduate scheme initially um, until that finished. And then I was working in the land and planning department. So buying sites, getting planning permission, and then sort of handing them over and then obviously then being built out, getting sold. And yeah, yeah so acquiring sites mainly and quite heavily planning related, which planning was it's a bit of a dark art really. And mm. obviously these planning applications are massive that you're dealing with. And it was, a lot of it was long-term sites. So you, it was, it was a long-term game and it was, I was, I've always been about kind of here and now and quite impatient really. Yeah. So seeing these sites that you take option agreements on for 10 mm. or 20 years, I was thinking, Jesus, I'm going to be however old when this comes to yeah. reality. And you just think, <laughs> I want something more immediate. Yeah. Um, it was good. And it's a decent company to work for. Challenging at times. Um, a lot of red tape, as you can imagine. Mm. Big corporate PLC like that. Yeah. Um, but no, it was, that was really good. Good experience. Good place to start your career at. Yeah. Um, but at times as well, me, the way that my sort of brain's wired and all this red tape, it just... I found it challenging at times, yeah. Yeah, anything like that, yeah. yeah it's, it's bureaucracy, yeah. It's, it's, uh, yeah, can't stand it. So with the graduate scheme with Taylor Wimpy, was that, did it give you an oversight of the whole process? I know you you, spe- you, you sort of went into the the, the, the land purchasing and, and, and options agreement eventually, but did the graduate scheme give you an, like a whole oversight of the business or? It did, mate, yeah. It was it was really good in that respect because you'd see it from, from start to finish. So right at the start, you'd be identifying sites, um, looking at the sort of the, the planning status and... Um, the potential that it had um, planning wise. And then, yeah, you'd, you'd kind of go f- through the phases. So you, we did stints, um, sort of rotations as they were um, with the various departments. And yeah, you got a, a complete insight. And even at the back end, you, you, you did, um, I can't remember how, how long it was now, it was a, a number of months, um, like in customer services. So completion had happened, um, customer had bought the, bought the plot, it, it was their home, and they were having issues with, I don't know, shrinkage where there's cracks coming through and they might have had issues with just little snagging issues perhaps um so yeah it gave you a complete overview as to the whole process being part of a house builder um as to yeah it was it was complete it was it was really yeah. good it was so great background you know doing what you're doing now it's a, it's a decent background um would you did it put you off new build stuff or is it or is it something that you think you'll go into in the future i think yeah it's definitely something that i'd like to go into i mean it's probably I haven't we haven't done a new build yet i haven't bought a, a plot of land and, and built a house out yet. yeah and it's something that i would look into it's just more recently probably put me off with as you'll know yourself it's cost of finance so like whether it be development finance or, or bridging um obviously cost cost of the works um massive yeah. at, at the gdvs there at the back end it's sort of little things that um sort of maybe i haven't gone into that more over the last few years but definitely i mean Doing it, Taylor Wimpy was, I mean, obviously one of the, the biggest PLC house builders in the country. Oh, huge, Just seeing yeah. It, yeah, on that scale was <clears> kind <throat> of worlds apart from where we would kick it off at. But yeah, yeah it, it did give you a, a really good insight. And it's definitely something that I would, would want to do. Maybe not in the, the foreseeable over the next couple of years, but longer mm-hmm. term. Yeah. Um, ten, year time, ten years time, yeah. I yeah. would like to have a crack at it. I'm sure it'll stand you in good stead, um, the knowledge even then, uh, the knowledge that you've picked up if you do, if you do uh, go that route. So what, um, so what were your main drivers, I guess, be, behind going into property then? Why, why property? Um, I think I found work quite, I enjoyed it at times, but I found it quite restrictive, you know. Um, certain amount of holidays, uh, sort of, there was no kind of flexibility at the time. I, they did try and incorporate a bit more like flexible working hours and things, but it was just the ability that my earnings were, were restricted. Yes, you could put more time in that you, you, you there was no guarantee that you'd get more back out that um that you would perceive to be kind of good whether that be earnings or, or your time um so i kind of thought right what other avenues could we look to do so i always knew property was something that could potentially give that um so yeah while i was at taylor wimpy started buying on the side and then thought hang on a minute there's probably it's not the sky's the limit but yeah sort of in a way that it was you could you could build it you could grow it and What's the what is the what are the restrictions? Because you can get you can get your time back. You can your income is to a degree infinite. Yeah, inf- exactly. Yeah. Um, so open my eyes to that, and then it just took a few years of building it on the side to get to a point where 
you could maybe park the day job and yeah. then go into this full time. So did you have a, 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 like a cash target uh, that you were working towards with your from, from passive perspective? Did you, did you think to yourself, right, I need so many properties to get out the day job and that was the target? Yeah, it was quite simple. It was just like, right, okay, so to replace the, the income that I have, I'll need this amount of properties based on each asset cash flow in yeah. roughly that amount. So it worked backwards. There was a bit of, I think our broker at the time, Dave, he was sort of saying, um, oh, Ollie, you, you ideally need this number. And I think in hindsight, if I had my time again, I would have jumped and left earlier to yeah. go into the business full time sooner. Um, but... Yeah, it, it, it was what it was at the time. Um, but yeah, I think it was, a, it was a good move and yeah, glad that obviously I did it and things. But um, yeah, it took, took a while to, to make yeah, it happen. Yeah, it does not quickly, does it? I, it's weird when I hear you talk there. I, I kind of, it makes me miss those days when I, when I had a full, full-time job and I was buying properties on the side mm. and just the, the focus, pure focus that I had, had at the time, right, I need this many properties, it'll, it'll create this much cash flow and then I'll be out my job. And I was going to work and I was doing my job, but I had so much focus on my property business on the side. It was such an enjoyable journey yeah. to get closer and closer to that goal. Um, in fact, the journey was probably better than the day I left my job. That, that was a great feeling, but the, I just loved that whole, you know, putting the cash aside, refinance and getting your cash back out for the next deal yeah. and, and knowing you were getting closer and closer to, to the goal. It's an interesting one, isn't it? And it's, yeah, yeah same thing as you. I think the, during that process, you maybe don't realise that, I mean, what, what do people say? It's, it's the process, enjoy the process, the process is maybe so better true. than the outcome, perhaps. Yeah. Um, I sort of maybe didn't enjoy the process as much because at times where I, I wasn't enjoying the day job and I was so focused on this end goal that I was just trying to get to that number that you touched on, yeah. that it was just like, blimey, get me to that end goal now and get, like, get me out so I can sort of leave this and do this full time. Yeah. And perhaps looking back, maybe didn't enjoy it as much as I, I could have done. It was just, as you all know, it was just, you've got your set hours at work, whatever they were, eight till five roughly. And then evenings was checking in on refurbs, um, things like that. Weekends, getting stuck in, yeah. painting, decorating, ripping them out, whatever it, it might have been. Yeah. And then for those years, I certainly no regrets and would do it all again. But um, yeah, at times it was obviously challenging but i think anything is that where you've got a, a decent outcome at the end it's always going to you're always going to have a, a number of years of where yeah. it's tricky yeah i think a lot of people as well whoever i speak to that they all say like you've just touched on it they, they wish they'd left the day job earlier yeah. um it's interesting when you're in the day job it's it's, it's, it's quite a frightening thought actually you, you're so used to you've probably had over a decade of, of regular income yeah um you know relying on somebody else for your income uh, to, to make that step but once you make the step you, you do my, my main issue, my main worry, I should say, when I was working full time was, would I be able to finance the projects that I'm doing without the regular income? Yeah. And then when I left and then continued to lend, I realized it made absolutely no difference. Yeah. Uh, they were so happy with the, with the current portfolio that I had and it wasn't massive. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm the same as you. I wish I'd, wish I'd made the jump earlier. Yeah. And I think, yeah, having time again, we would have both, have, yeah, from what you've said, it's the same we would have gone earlier. But I think information from people that I certainly valued said that the broker who we still work with today, he was telling me not to do it. But looking back now, I think we both know that I could have gone could have gone sooner. Um, and it was just little things that I was maybe worrying about. Obviously being employment, in employment, sorry, obviously three months pay slips. Um, it's, it's very easy just to provide those to your broker and get the, the funding in place. Whereas um, it's SA3 or... 302s and things like that and um, your, your tax overviews and your tax calculations and things like that now is, is slightly different providing your, your limited company accounts and things it's just yeah it's it's probably no different actually to your three months pay slips but initially yeah. that initial phase of doing the jump is yeah maybe a bit of a it's, it's new territory, isn't it? It's, Gosses, um, it's yeah. different to, to yeah. when, when you're employed. But Well, you certainly need that CV. You certainly need that credibility. You certainly need, you know, uh, evidence of a portfolio to, to make the jump. But yeah, I think I think we all realised in hindsight that we could have made the jump with a, a slightly smaller portfolio. Yeah. Um, so let's let's have a look at that portfolio then. So while you're working at, at Taylor Wimpy, um, what, what type of stuff were you buying? So the sort of stuff I was buying um, was sort of two, three bedroom terraces and semis. Uh, predominantly holding them. Yeah. So buying at, a, I mean, you know the process better than anyone, Dave, buying at a discount, adding the value, refinancing them, pulling a decent chunk of the, 
the initial funds out and recycling those into the next the next projects really and then topping them up with with flips so i don't know on average every four or five we were buying there was a there was a flip combined um just Brilliant. to just to say if, if maybe five to ten thousand was left in each of those deals when i was employed a flip that might make between 25 maybe 35 on a, on a good one Brilliant. that would it wasn't used to to go on holiday then or or to to get whatever it, it might have been at home it was to to put that money back into those deals that that were maybe there's a bit of a shortfall yeah um so yeah they were sort of good good solid stock in teesside um broadly speaking purchase prices from sort of 60 70 80 90 thousand refinancing sort of anywhere from 100 to 130 yeah um was roughly what we were what we were looking to buy at the yeah. time and it's probably it's the same now yeah yeah and were you, you you touched on getting stuck in? Were you, were you ripping the houses out, doing doing the decorating at the end, etc.? Yeah, I needed to learn. I didn't. I've never really been that hands on. I'm, I'm still really not now. Um, I sort of tend to get in the way whenever I'm at yeah, these places. I know that feeling. Yeah, Do you, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You feel a bit like a bit of a burden. You feel like you're getting yeah. straight away. But yeah, it's, it's good to it's good to learn, isn't it? So yeah. I needed to learn, and yeah, we were getting these projects on, and I was thinking, right, what can I do? Okay ripping out that's something that i can do right okay i can't get involved with a rewire because i'm not an electrician i can't get involved with any plumbing um so anyway got those guys got those guys in plastering no but i thought right decorating at the end and things like that yeah just just sort of saving money in the early we all stages. do it yeah we all yeah and it's, it, yeah. it's helpful isn't it it's of course it is. um it's a good way to start save a few quid along the way and then i think as time goes on and you build a, a bigger portfolio and you want to scale and outsource and leverage things better, then you can get get the lads in, can't you? And go to relationships longer term with those yeah. with those guys, and go from there. So yeah, it was it was good to to get your hands dirty, and we we still do now, but maybe nowhere near as much as what we perhaps did yeah. back then. Yeah, I think it's definitely a good thing to do. Learn learn each trade, so you know from a pricing perspective and from a process uh, sort of view, so you know exactly how long. Th- things take and why they take that long um why they cost what they do materials and labor split etc etc yeah um and it's good fun as well isn't it it's good fun at the in the early days it, getting it stuck in yeah, yeah like yeah ripping somewhere out is and you don't have to worry too much because it's all gonna if you are going back to brick yeah. then yeah it's you can make as much mess as, as you want and yeah. you know everything's gonna gonna be all right and yeah it's a it's a good good way of learning isn't it so i think yeah. it's a it's an important one in the early stages 100 percent to, yeah. to learn yeah yeah i was the same I, I gave everything a go in the early days not electrics or, or gas obviously but uh, the joinery and stuff like that and then <laughs> Did you? Yeah. oh it was terrible yeah it was ter- <laughs> it took twice as long because they had to redo what i undo what i'd done and then cost twice as much uh, because there was more work involved so yeah, yeah I, 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 yeah. I quickly quickly learned to, to step thing, aside yeah. yeah and then obviously as your income increases from your property you can afford to pay people to do more of the work but also you start to, to realize that the real value is in your time isn't it yeah and that's that's a big big thing that isn't it it's sort of me in the in the mindset perhaps back then was more like right okay if, if i'm going to decorate this house i'm going to save 1500 quid two grand whatever the size of the house is or the cost of the labor for the for the guys doing it so the short term view would have been i'm going to save that money the deal is therefore going to be better but then if you think to yourself well hang on a minute i can't raise any investor finance if i'm busy decorating or i can't be viewing and offering on the next deals and then all of a sudden you've spent however long you might have spent in that refurb just yeah. solely on that project and then you've got no no pipeline going forward no. so yeah that yeah that was definitely something that we we came across um and something i still I still find myself now not doing what I want to be doing, i.e. too busy in a project rather yeah. than doing what I feel I, sh- I should be Where doing. Where the value is, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think we're all guilty of that. You know, it's, you know, it's, that's human nature. I think, it, you know, ideally what, you'd, what you would spend your time doing, but life gets in the way sometimes. And, um, but yeah, it, it's, uh, you learn as you, as you go along that, uh, that just let the professionals get on with, yeah. with, with, certainly with the trade side of stuff. 100%. Um, so how were you financing those early deals? Was it t- traditional um, sort of mortgages? Were you, did you have investor finance from, from an early start? or? Yeah, so, so initially kicked it off. So it was, it was my savings and my, my partner Yasmin, uh, her savings, um, and they only went so far. So um, we pretty much bought them on, on standard kind of traditional buy-to-let mortgages, which looking back with the process that we went through of adding value 
and then struggling to maybe refinance those because we'd fixed them in yeah. when we bought them at for two years or five years, whatever the, yeah. the term of the, the mortgage was. So yeah, they were initially the first five or six bought on traditional mortgages. Yeah. And then we were paying early redemption charges to yeah. come out of them right. because we would have bought them at the right money and then, yeah, done some work and there would have been an uplift. Yeah. So, but I didn't, I mean, I, I always knew that the importance of, of buying at a discount was important, yeah. um, but maybe just didn't have the right process in place of knowing that, right, I could use Bridge and Finance to, to acquire this. Yeah. And then as soon as the work is done, exit that onto a term, buy to let mortgage. Um, yeah. So yeah, a few few mistakes like that in the early early stages. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's technically mortgage fraud that, because it's not the right product for what you're doing. It's A lot of these pro- properties were in a, yeah. in, a, in a poor condition. So raising a, a traditional buy to let mortgage on a on these properties that we were buying probably wasn't the right product for, for that. But I don't think it's fraudulent. I, I think I don't think mortgage companies, well, they, I know they certainly don't like you using uh, sort of a short two-year fixed, for instance, as, as, as short-term finance with the intention of, of, of uh, refinancing. But that's what the early repayment charges are there for. It, it, yeah, you've been penalised, uh, essentially, um, for, for their missed interest. A lot of the time you're staying with the same lender when you refinance anyway, aren't you? Yeah. So how, how how soon were you refinancing? How, how soon were you coming off these early, the, the fixed rates? It's quite quick, you know, it was sort of like within six months. Right. It was like prime for, for bridging is like exactly what, Bridging finance or or, yeah. or or a cash purchase maybe should should be used for it was yeah. the yeah we yeah it, it wasn't it didn't hurt us in any way it was just it was just more of a an education like a learning yeah thing of course that we, yeah. that we stumbled across where um, it was flagged to us like with the method that you're doing here you're not funding it correctly in the first place yeah um, so but we 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 weren't to know I didn't really no, know anyone at the time that was that was using bridging finance. I'd heard the term yeah. thrown about a bit on the internet. Um, but yeah, that was, so initially, sorry, Dave, yeah, to answer your question, a lot of them initially were, yeah. were buy to let mortgages. I think a lot of people go that route. I certainly um, um, did at least a couple in uh, that, that, that sort of way. So yeah, I don't think it's anything to worry about. It's an expensive process with the early repayment charges, but I guess with bridging, you, you know, you're paying your entry fee and your exit fee um, normally anyway. So probably about the same. Probably sim- yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, 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 I'd agree. Yeah, yeah. So then you start to use bridging. Yeah. From then on, um, so when you left Taylor, Taylor Wimpy, how how many properties did you have then? So it was just over ten. I think we were we were at roughly between ten and twelve. Right. Um, yeah, and that was kind of a sensible level where there was uh, coverage. There was enough that I'd replaced uh, whatever the salary was at Taylor Wimpy. Yeah. Um, there was a bit of a buffer, a uh, bit of coverage just to be able to to leave, move on, um, and and go from there. So, yeah, I just wanted a little bit of margin, um, yeah. just a bit of a buffer, just to be safe. But, yeah. Um, yeah, we were about that level, about, yeah, 10 to yeah. 12, I, I think, from memory. Is Yasmin heavily involved in the in the property stuff? That she, does she still work? Yeah, so she, she works for the NHS, so she's a James Cook. Right. Um, she's qualified She qualified as a doctor last year. Oh, so, um, yeah, she's really pleased. That's been a sort of a long process. Um, so, yeah, she's finished. But, she, no, she, so she's... Full time, obviously doing that. She kind of, she got quite a decent position. She's like a bird's eye, bird's eye view of of, of what, what kind of I get up to on a daily basis. So she yeah. can kind of like <laughs> oversee anything that sort of she perceives to be maybe not the right move. Yeah. You don't um, mean literally. She hasn't got a drone following you. No, 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 not, not quite. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> not yet. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, it's helpful having her on board, but not daily because yeah, it just bit of support, sort of bounce ideas off. Yeah. Um, quite a logical kind of decision-making process that she's got um, keeps me right. And yeah. yeah, it's a, it's a good, a good kind of setup really. She just sort of maybe on, on an evening, we'll have a chat on a weekend. She'll pop in and see what, yeah. what projects are, are on. Um, and then sort of from a, a finance perspective, um, she won't get involved with it. Like no. the minor, the minor sort of details because she hasn't got the time with, with the day job, but um, yeah. yeah, she definitely helps. Yeah, good. I think that's a good setup because you know you, you can, she knows enough about the process to you, so you can bounce ideas off her, show projects, etc. But because she's not involved in it all day every day, you're not sort of worn down by it as a couple. You, you see, you're on site all day, you're dealing with mortgages all day, and then going home on a night and talking about the same things. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, she'll be genuinely interested to to hear about what's going on. She is, yeah. And I think you kind of when you've got, you'll know what it's like when you've 
when you've got like a baby and you've, whether it be the first property you bought or more recently, whatever you've bought, you've kind of, she knows what they are. She's like, oh yeah, I remember doing that bathroom five years ago or whatever, these little, these little things or whatever it might be. So she's got like a, a genuine interest in it. Um, I think she might get, I mean, you'll know with the challenges with the trades and stuff, if you were getting knocked about with that daily, she might be a bit like, what the hell am I doing here? Get me back to the NHS sort of thing. But um, yeah, it, it works all right. You know, it's a yeah. good, good setup here. Good. So how many properties do you, do you currently own then? So we've got, what have we got at the moment? We've got 29 um, in the portfolio. And w- over the years, I think we've flipped six, seven. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, so yeah, 29 occupied and those, those seven that we've, that we've flipped. Um, yeah, since March 2019 was when we, when we bought the first one in Thornaby. So yeah. That's where we're at. So, you've, so you've, you now own 29 properties mm-hmm. and you started in 2019. Uh, yeah. That's incredible. Oh, thanks, mate. No, 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 I appreciate that, Dave. It's good of you to, to say. And yeah, yeah it's, um, yeah, it's been obviously quite a, a challenging process, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. I'd, I'd do yeah. it all again tomorrow and still doing it, obviously. So yeah, yeah no, it's been, been good. And no, it's good of you to say, mate. Yeah. Just show us for people listening or watching that, you know, what is achievable. Um, you've obviously put in the hard yards in the early days and, you know, I'm sure the, those numbers will increase at a faster and faster rate mm. uh, as you go along your journey because, as we've touched on, your time will be spent actually physically growing the growing the portfolio rather than being on site, doing the, doing the donkey work type of thing. So what are your plans from there? You know, you've achieved so much in in four years. What, what's How do you see the portfolio sort of developing from here? Um, I think the way that I see it, Doing these individual deals, so the buy, refurbish, refinance that we all, all refer to quite a lot as, as a, a very good and st- like the best strategy I, I know of that I'm aware of, that, that there might be others out there, to, to build and grow a portfolio using the same kind of pot of money yeah. um, is brilliant. So, yeah, I think what I did come to kind of learn was that doing this individually on each individual kind of project was time consuming it was quite capital intensive you're tying up quite a bit of money on each deal so and you know what it's like with refurbs it's like you got if you take it through the process you got got your viewings you get your offers in raise the finance acquire it do the work exit the exit the, the bridge onto a term mortgage there, there are obviously challenges throughout the process probably more in the middle when you when you're on with the work um i kind kind of started to think is there a way of building up a portfolio without doing it deal by deal and kind of came across purchasing portfolios yeah. um, and maybe focused on that a bit more over the last couple of years. Yeah. So those 29 that are in the portfolio now, they haven't all been separate 29 deals. Part yeah. of those are portfolios that we've bought. Um, so there was one of seven, there was one of four, um, there was another one of, of three. So those numbers are topped up by portfolio purchases. But what I came to find out is going forward those are quite as long as the numbers work and it's viable those can be quite attractive um rather than having to do each sort of them all kind of separately yeah um so that's more of what sorry mate yeah that's more of what maybe we'll we'll look to yeah to okay i mean it's a great way of doing things and, and you don't hear of, of, of that many people buying portfolios mm. generally um so take us through for people listening, because I've, I've bought a small one myself, but mm. but take us through um, sort of the process of buying a portfolio from the from the negotiation uh, standpoint, from the finance standpoint, from the um, legal standpoint. Yeah, so so the first one then um, introduced to us from our mortgage broker at the time. He had a client that was looking to exit the market. I think he was maybe sort of retirement, roughly retirement age, sixty five ish, um, wanting to sell his portfolio. So it got put our way and it was the first time I'd come across this with like a good opportunity where you think right we can actually buy these four so the way that I ran the numbers and it might not be right other people might have a different way of doing it I kind of worked out what I thought the the GDV so the gross development value what the the total value of the units were um, and then pretty much applied sort of a 20 to 25 percent discount I think it's 20 I started off 25 percent initially to kick off as a first offer uh, any refurbishment works, knock those off, and it essentially kind of created a like a residual valuation, um, and then any fees, any cost of finance included in that, 
uh, put that offer forward. It wasn't quite good enough. Went up a little bit. Anyway, it was accepted. Um, bought them. They were tenanted. So a lot of these existing rents were quite low. So it was a bit of a... Um, it was important to get those rents up to roughly where market rent was um, and then look to refinance them at the back end. Um, and then, yeah, went through that process, pulled pretty much all of the, the money out that we that we tied up, did some some kind of work to them in like new bathrooms, um, bits of bits of decorating just to kind of help the values, which which was challenge, challenging. Bearing in mind, they were lived in by by families. I didn't know the the families because they'd had this landlord for the last sort of 20 25 yeah. years so they were all tenanted were they yeah yeah right, they were okay. so that was kind of maybe the first instance of of doing work to properties where they were lived in like we we weren't doing rewires with no. families and you can't i mean you probably could we haven't done it but yeah. stuff like that wasn't right so trying to do a bathroom in a week with a family of five was yeah challenging when but there's they one were, toilet in the house yeah exactly yeah. but they were they were grateful and and, and things like that and then similar sort of process i keep banging on about it but yeah they were bought at the right money bits were, were done to them um and then yeah valued up okay put, put pretty much most of the money out and i kind of thought to myself well hang, hang on a minute there's four being done in the same process as what we were used to do in one why can't we maybe look to do this a bit more going forward mm. um just helps the numbers generally more rental income, yeah. um, more kind of capital value, if you, if, if you call it that. And just generally, I, th I thought it was a good thing to, to start doing. Did you find the negotiation process easier because it was a portfolio? You, because, you know, you, you, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that the, the owner of the portfolio was looking to get out as quick as he could, sick of the headaches that he was getting from the potential tenants or, or from the properties. Um, and you're taking the job lot off him. You're taking his headaches away in, in, in one fell swoop. Yeah. Did that make the negotiation process easier? I think it did, you know. I think his circumstances probably came into it as well with him wanting to retire. Had them for, I can't remember now, 25 years roughly. Um, he had them on from what the broker told me. They weren't interest only, they were capital repayment. So he didn't right. know anything on them. So I think that maybe helped at the time in terms of negotiation and the price that we could buy them in at. Um, was were they held in his, in his own name, were they? No, they're in a limited company. Right, okay. But we looked at buying the company, but because we weren't buying the whole of the portfolio, we could, I tried to uh, negotiate right. on more, but we could only agree on these four. Um, so there, there was a, we were suggested to look to, to buy that company, um, but because we couldn't facilitate all of them that he owned, I think he had, I can't remember now, eight or nine, and we couldn't quite agree on the others. It was just part of it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, they were bought separately. But th there were other things that we, we could look to to kind of use, like um, rather than paying uh, stamp duty at 3%, yep. there was like multiple dwellings relief, which was the first time I'd come across that, yep. which was helpful. So there's a bit of a saving there. Yep. Um, yeah, that was a, the process of how, the, how they were bought. And I think, yeah, his circumstances of wanting to exit did, did help, yeah. yeah. And the legal process then, was it just as, as, as straightforward as, well, I should say straightforward, it's never straightforward, is it? But... From a conveyancing process, was there any any obstacles to be had there with it? Would there be multiple properties, or was it pretty much as as you were? It was in the in the main. It was it was pretty much as you would normally expect. I think there was there was more in terms of his compliance, sort of CP12, so gas safety, um, yeah. EICRs, like none of that. that those it, old it was, school landlords never have yeah, any yeah. sets in place. And I think they had it quite easy. Those guys back then, when you yeah. compare it to like you and I now, and regulation and compliance and things like that, like just didn't have anything. No EICRs, no CP12s, no EPCs. Um, tenancy agreements were dated from 2010. I wouldn't be surprised if you if you went around and picked up the money in cash rather yeah. than bank transfer or standing order or direct debit, whatever. Yeah. Um, just very old school. So that needed to, that was a bit of a challenge in terms of so when you're buying with a tenant in, in situ, legally, they need to have at the point of purchase and still now, you have to have those things in place. Yeah. So you have to retrospectively get those works done but then there was like remedial works that needed to be done with the electric say, especially from the EICR point of view I bet there was loads of work to do wasn't there yeah yeah and like it was it was a kind of then sort of had to like renegotiate in a way with him because he was sort of saying oh the electrician's gonna on these four it's gonna be x amount to get two of the four done which we need to do who's gonna pay for that because you're buying it from me and my view is how oh, you should pay because you've owned them for this amount of time and all these sort of conversations but anyway we we, we came to an agreement and it all worked, but yeah, it was just 
probably should, he should have had those things in place. Yeah, for sure. But you see it time and time again. We get landlords coming to us, asking us to manage their properties in the in the, in the property management business, and um, yeah, they, they've never had any cert. And one landlord actually said to me, "I'll never get an electrical cert on my properties. I, I never needed them in my day." I'm like, well, that doesn't really work like that. The times, yeah, we yeah. won't be managing that that property for you. Thank you. Yeah, you must get some uh, a few characters. Oh, like, unbelievable! Yeah. It's uh, but it, it just shows you how how times have changed. It yeah. was a different world when you know 20, 25 years ago. And it's it's for the right thing, isn't it? Like having a carbon monoxide alarm. Yeah, is important. It's it's got to be in every property that you've got that's tenanted. It's it's like it's a big safety point. If you know, you know what I mean, the yeah. risk and yeah. things like that. Oh, certainly improved. Certainly improved. Yeah, yeah, and it's for the. I know it can be. A bit of a pain. It might be a bit stringent, and yeah, you've got to get your, your gas done, your, your CP12 done annually. But it's it's definitely the right thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, from a tenant's perspective, and yeah, it needs to be done. So the the other portfolios you've bought then have they been limited companies? Have you bought the companies, or is it same sort of scenario? So the one that we bought, um, so there were seven last year. You, I think you know the seller. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I know when we we spoke yeah. about it before. So no, he's got a like a very large portfolio. I think at, yeah. at one point he was operating at sort of maybe 90 to 100 units. Yeah. Um, and we weren't going to purchase anywhere near that amount off him. Um, so again, it was similar to the other one. We were just buying a small part of, of, of what he owned. Yeah. Um, so we couldn't really explore the route of buying his company unless we could have afforded yeah. a big would have been nice. Yeah, 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 it would have been nice. We could have, we could have uh, chipped in both of us and uh, yeah, maybe he's done a deal. Maybe. I mean, it's yeah, big numbers, weren't they? Yeah, but, um, massive, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's probably a similar similar process. So a lot of those we're currently experiencing, where where we bought, say some of the latter ones, bought them like a few days before Christmas, and I think we completed on those like twentieth or twenty first of of December last year. So we're currently on the bridges with those, looking at, at maybe ways that we can exit. Yeah. Um, those within six months, which um, a little bit challenging. Is there works to be done on those as well then to, to increase the, the capital values? Yeah, there is a bit, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, the seller was a lot better in terms of compliance and yeah. staying on top of yeah. things and he had a managing agent in place yeah. uh, and things like that. So that's been a lot more straightforward. But as you all know, they've been tenanted, a lot of these, for 20, 30 years. And yeah, they're, they're sort of tired in place and work does need to be done. Yeah. But yeah, they're, they're all in decent condition, you know. They were looked after, good tenants. A lot of these tenants have been in for, for 15, 20 years, sort of long term. Um, didn't want anything to change. Um, but yeah, sort of, again, sort of decent portfolio purchase. Yeah. And yeah, bits of remedial works in to, to help them. Um, but nothing crazy. Yeah. I think because we, we've done works in, in tenanted properties and it is, it is quite challenging. Mm. You know, time is of the essence. But generally, tenants are so grateful. You know, they've been had the same bathroom or kitchen for twenty five years. Yeah. Landlord won't spend a penny. You know, it's a decent trade off. Okay, the, the rent will probably go up a little bit, but you know, we've got a brand new kitchen or bathroom. You know, which from a from your point of view as well, the kitchen and bathroom are obviously where you get your main uplifts on your value. Yeah. So it's a win win for everyone, isn't it? It is hundred percent, and yeah, they're grateful, aren't they? And they appreciate generally. It. Yeah. If they, we did one recently in in Grangefield. Um, I think it's New- Newham Grange. Do you yeah. Know it? yeah, 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 um, right, yeah. Just near the Sainsbury's there. Yeah. Um, just did one there, and yeah, bathroom sort of 20, 20 year old um, hasn't been touched, she, and it just works well because we bought using using bridging finance again, and yeah, new bathroom. And the conversation was had about she currently pays massively under market rent. She realizes that she's been fortunate for the last those amount those amount of years, like a significant period of time. So she she knew that it was coming and is, is happy to pay more towards what the market rent is, yeah. especially with getting a new bathroom as well. And then it, from a, not a selfish point of view, but from a personal point of view, it, it's going to help at the back end when we when we come to exit the bridge. So it works works all around, really. Yeah. yeah. So where you are in the, in, in, in the current sort of journey, are you still doing the odd flip to, to top the top the pot back up? Yeah, have to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I think this year we're, 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 we're going to be looking to do more of them. Yeah. Um, so I think we... So three or four, like three last year, right? Um, okay. And yeah, the same amount pretty much the year before. Um, again, and it's it's part of the the model really to yeah. allow kind of further growth and to kind of keep the the wheels in motion. I think this year we're going to look to do more than what we've done previously. Um, since so when was the mini budget announcement? It was the back end oh, of God. 2022, wasn't it? I think <laughs> that um, yeah. I don't want to bring back bad memories, no, but uh, yeah, not. that was. 
I remember seeing a seeing the graph, and anyway, the the longer term effects of that were were more going to be in terms of maybe repossessions and yeah. the real hit was going to going to come in. I think from what I saw, twenty twenty five. So, from my point of view, I think having a a better cash position for twenty twenty five could be favourable. So, I mean, I might be be completely wrong here, um, but my view was focus more on flips this year. Um, do a few of the, the classic kind of retain them as as long term yeah. rentals, but yeah, get a better cash position for into next year. Yeah. So we've got a good twelve months now of focusing on that, and then kind of all guns blazing. Yeah, um, yeah. Flips seen. I mean, they're always popular. Flips they're great, aren't it? Um, unicorns at times. The, the way yeah. people talk about flips. But are you are you finding it easy enough to find those flips? Do you use property sources? How do you find your deals in general? Yeah, I mean. I'd be, I'd certainly be amenable to, to working with a source. I've never, I've never had a property source. They've always been like on the market, like right move, yeah. auction, re- repossessions, whatever they've sort of the background of the sales has been. But no, I've never, never used a source. But so I certainly would if, if the numbers were right. I do find them challenging to, to find at times um, because there, there's a lot of people out there that are, are doing this and looking for these type yeah. of opportunities. Um, whether it be builders or whether it be people like you and I or whether it be people that maybe are, are retired and they've got a bit more time back and yep. they want to have a hobby and they're not fussed yep. about whether a refurb takes eight weeks or a couple of months, or, or, say six months or, or whatever it might happen yep. to be. Um, so, yeah, sometimes it can be challenging to find them, but I think relationships with, with agents is okay. important, isn't yep. it? And if you've got maybe a bit of a buying history with them, they know that you're, you're real and things like that, it, it certainly does help, doesn't it? You, you will have found yeah. that over the years. Yeah, relationships with agents are, are, are absolutely key. They're, 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 you know, they're a game changer. Mm. Um, I think the northeast in general, it, it's, it's, it's always been competitive in the northeast from, a, from a, an investment point of view. Now it's so popular with, with southern-based investors as well. I think over the last decade, that's changed dramatically. Um, certainly from my experience, I used to, used to speak to a handful of southern investors that were buying in the northeast. Now it's... It's trendy. It's yeah. every everyone wants a piece of the northeast now, don't they? Yeah, they do, uh, which yeah. which has had a massive effect on upward pressure on rents and per, uh, and, and capital values. So that's good. Uh, but yeah, it is. It does make it a lot more competitive uh, when you when you buy. It. You start looking at areas that you, you maybe wouldn't have done before. Mm. Um, but you've got to draw a line somewhere. Yeah, I I agree with you, and I think the problem because sort of the model that you'll know about is quite strict with the numbers and you've got to be for it to be viable and to, to make it work. Whereas people that don't plug these numbers in like you or I would do into a spreadsheet and they're looking, we, we look for a, a certain return on investment or yeah. capital left in a deal, uh, maybe not as fussed on yield, but these guys, they're not, they won't run the numbers because they've got that amount of money in the background. It might be Southern people, it might be people from abroad, it might be, local people that have maybe sold a business and they've got yeah. a pot just to just to go with. And when you're up against guys like that, um, it can be challenging, can't it? Yeah. Um, it's amazing how many southern, southern-based investors, particularly, I see buying properties that just because it needs a refurb. I mean, the, 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 G, the GDV will be 100, 100K, it'll be up for 90K and they'll buy it yeah. because it needs a refurb. Oh, well, great. So I can add value to it, yeah. But Hang on a minute, there's a ceiling here. Exactly, yeah. 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 It's a, it's amazing some of the some of the deals that we, that we see uh, that we see people buy, but you know if it works for them, it works for them. Yeah. Um, so what's your, your main sort of challenges at the moment from a finance point of view? Have you started to use private finance? Or are you still? Yeah, that was something we we started getting involved with. I'm trying to think maybe back in the 2020 or 2021 um, that we started looking at external investor finance because it got to the point where my savings, Yasmin's savings, were depleted, and we thought, right, hang on a minute, if we want to scale this. And if I'm looking to, to do this full time, we can't just have our, our savings pot going around. We're going to have to scale this up and go out and work with investors here. So it was it was through it was through our broker um, who put us in touch with yeah. with an investor. Yeah. Um, and it was probably a, a little bit easier back then. Um, he wasn't getting a great rate of return um, having it in an ISA or invested. We were able to offer a little bit more and things like that. And yeah got a loan agreement put put in place Great. and went through it that route. And it, it just helps you, your growth, doesn't it? it, it yeah. You're able to do more and, yeah, just all around a, something that you probably 
depending on what your goals are, probably yeah. look to do, yeah. Yeah, I think everybody hits that point or they hits that ceiling where, where you do need to go to, to you know, for, for outside investment. So you've found that process quite seamless then. You've it, it, It's been a, a positive experience by the sounds of it. It has been, and I think fortunate in terms of it came through the broker. Um, he's, done, he's done some good things for you, your broker, he has, hasn't yeah, he? Yeah, 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 with a portfolio. <laughs> he's, 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 he gave us a bit of a, a leg up with, with putting us in touch with with an investor that we st- still work with now. So, yeah, yeah um, it's worked quite well, you know, having having him on board. And yeah. I'm glad that we, we have, you know. Um, but it is important, isn't it? Because you, you're going to eventually run out of your own money because you've got the you've got it tied up in, in multiple deals yeah. and various things like that. I think maybe the only way that you might be able to go further alone without engaging with an investor uh, might be maybe in the earlier stages to just purely focus on flips build up your pot, perhaps, I don't know what you think, and then look to deploy that. But then it's still going to run out. Yeah, it's still going to run out eventually, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it's... Yeah, I think it's, 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 it, it needs to be done. Um, hmm. So is he investing with you on a, on a project-to-project basis or is it just a pot of cash, uh, pay a fixed return until until you don't need it anymore and, yeah. then, and then pay me the capital back? Yeah, so it's, it's not it's not deal or, or property related. Brilliant. It's, it's on a... It's on a loan agreement basis over well, twelve months is what it has been um, at a fixed rate of return, um, and yeah, just happy to to keep it going time and time yeah. again. And I mean, if he the, the certain within the agreement, there's a certain period of time that we would need to know if he if he did want those funds back to him. Yeah, like a notice period. A, yeah. yeah, like a, a heads up because obviously we've got them working. They're, yeah, they're they're at the moment in deals. Um, so that's how it's worked, rather than it being on a deal by deal basis, which I, s- I think would would still work, but if you're doing quite a few deals and stuff, yeah, it gives you that flexibility, doesn't it? It does, mate. Yeah, and and you know, it's 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 win win. You know, he's he's getting a much higher interest rate than he would anywhere else. Yeah, I'm sure. He now you now have that trust in place because he's he's seen the deals you're doing. You mm. you know, he, he sees that you're genuine, so it shouldn't really have to end at, a, at any point, really. No, I I I agree with you. And I, yeah, I don't think so. But I I mean, you've you've still got to. It's, it, the numbers are important without analyzing the numbers to the nth degree and not doing anything which is is wrong but you've still got to when you're working with investors and, and their funds yeah it's you can't just go freestyling and just buying at the rate of knots and paying over the odds for stuff or no. miss kind of calculating what the refurb cost might be um, but I guess that's improving your processes as well because it's somebody else's money you take more care yeah. So you, you're drilling down on those numbers even more. You tighten up, tighten up your your, your sort of uh, expectations. Hundred percent. And it makes you a better investor at the end of the day. It does. Yeah, it gives yeah. you more of a like a rounded view. And yeah, you've just got to be strict with what you're doing. And yeah, be professional with it. Really, you can't yeah. just kind of glaze over things and just think, oh, everything's going to yeah. be all right and things like that. There's, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm sure you wouldn't have put the money on the table. Did, had he not realised that you were professionals already in the first place? No, exactly. So there was, with, with that, there was an element of having to do deals initially to say, right, we've done this amount now. Um, probably, again, it was just before I'd, I'd, I'd gone full-time, so we've probably done 10, I yeah. say. So a bit of a track record. Um, we've done this amount of flips, which wouldn't have been many at the time, probably two, three, maybe, um, and then had, had the portfolio in the background. And, yeah, he could see from the deals that we'd done where we went through with them, Purchased at this, spent this, exited at this. The net loan was this. We pulled out this, and he would have probably seen those and thought, "Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. I know where my money's going into these various projects." And yeah, loan agreement drawn up, signed, and away we go. I guess to evidence the works that you've done was a lot easier as well with, with the with the investor coming through your broker. You know, that, that's the best reference you're going to have it, if that broker had put the finance together for all for all of those ten previous deals. Uh, it's a no-brainer for him, isn't it? Yeah, and yeah, exactly. And the broker knows the area. He knows what the exit's going to be value-wise. So he can kind of have an overall kind of view as to whether or not it's going to be sound for him as well as us. Um, so yeah, having him in the background as well was was good for, for both parties. Probably more him because it sort of he knew his, everything was going to be safe and above board, if you like. But yeah. 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 Excellent, mate. It's a very, very positive experience. So in the current climate, you know, we've, we've seen rates go through the roof last 12 months. Well, uh, uh, longer than that. Um, how are you finding 
making those numbers work now compared to, say, eight, eight, 18 months ago? Yeah, it's a good question. And it was a bit of a, a kicker, wasn't it, when they when they went up? Um, so we were, a lot of our, our fixed, we were fixing stuff to like limited company lending, I don't know, 3% roughly, early threes prior? Yeah. Was that roughly-ish where you yeah, were Yeah, sort of there? high twos, early threes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Limited company, yeah. Yeah, so maybe two, five years, maybe a little bit higher. And yeah, looking back now, I just obviously wish I'd fixed them for longer. I, I should have realized, but not having a background in it, I, I didn't really know. I just looked at the numbers and just thought, oh, the two years is, is better. So let's It became the norm. Them. It was just so normal, wasn't it, for twos and threes? Yeah. It was effectively free money for, for so long. It was. It was, so, it, was, it was good. And it was nice to, to realize kind of more of the back end of that. But probably wish I was like you 10 years earlier and realized that through those sort of that period rather than sort of getting it at the back end but it was it was a great time wasn't it yeah brilliant. but um yeah so then going forward now we're looking more at like the, the recent ones that we've done sort of five and a half percent yeah. which i see over the last sort of three months to be dropping more closer towards five yeah which is positive but yeah still sort of into the fives yeah. which is two percent up on what we're at yeah, some good rates kicking around now, isn't there? The only thing is the arrangement fees are sky high. So it's, the, obviously, the, the lenders are getting getting around the stress test by providing lower rates. You know, you're sort of five, five and a half, but mm. then charging you six, seven yeah, percent arrangement fee. So I can't see that being a long term solution. Surely it can't be. Do you think lenders were doing that just to so they could make their deals more attractive? They were lowering. The, the rate to say five ish percent, but then doing the five six percent arrangement. Yeah. Do you reckon that's how they were? I think it's an, there's an element of that making the deal appear more attractive to the investor, but also I think the main reason is, is getting around that. Uh, you know, the financial authorities set the they have to they have to pass a stress test on each deal. So, yeah. and it's the and it's the monthly repayment interest repayment, yeah. which, which is the stress test against the rent. Mm. So obviously the monthly repayment is going to be smaller. But yeah, your upfront phrase, they're, they're still making the money back, yeah. but they're getting around the stress test. So I don't see that going on for, for too long, hopefully. We're, we are seeing those sort of arrangement fees drop now. The, the sixes and sevens are now sort of becoming fours and fives, but they still need to come down. Mm-hmm. It was sort of one, two percent a couple of years ago for an arrangement yeah. fee. Um, so we'll see. In, in, interesting times ahead, but at least, you know, you're still finding deals. Yeah, and it's obviously, as you all, have, you all know, it's like nipped the, the cash flow, hasn't it? It's gone yeah. from. I don't know some good deals that might have been cash flowing four hundred on a on good deals, um, where the rents would have been sort of up there at market rent, just on the refurb, valued up all right, sort of top rent. Um, yeah, now come to exit that after the two years, so that four hundred has now got squeezed to two hundred or two fifty in, in a decent case. But so yeah, they're all getting squeezed a bit. But then at the same in the same breath at the same time, the the, the rents have have improved quite significantly, um, yeah. which has kind of evened things out somewhat, yeah. would you say? Yeah, I'd say so. There's, there's a few of my deals that have, that have come off <clears throat> the extremely low rate onto the new sort of rates, but the rents have gone up that much. Instead of making 400, I'm making 350. Yeah. You know, it's not the end of the world. Mm. I wish I was still making 400, obviously, but you know, it's not the end of the world. The good properties, they, they've gone up in value, uh, and I'm still sort of making 350, 350 pounds net. Uh, pre maintenance, of course, as long as there's no maintenance. But, <laughs> but yeah, so it's 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 not the the it's it's not the the nightmare that the, the media and, and a lot of people would have you would have you believe it is. I don't think, and I think there's going to be more opportunities this year. I think 2024, 20, 25, there's going to be a huge amount of opportunities. Mm. I think vendors have come a little bit become a little bit more realistic with the prices yeah. because of the period of, of high interest rates that we've just had. It's brought people back down to earth. I think. Um, but lenders are lending it. Lend, lenders are lending again. They're keen to lend. You know, if they don't lend, they don't make money. And uh, we're seeing a lot more property come, stock come to the market already since the turn of the year. So I think it's, it's going to be good times. I agree with you. There's going to be some pain coming, sort of 2025, 26. Yeah. If you look at the 18 year property cycle, which I I'm obsessed with. I know it's not. I know it's only a guide, but I do get a little bit obsessed with it. But 2026 is the next crash on that. So is that what I, I still think right. that ties in. Um, Personally, but we'll see. My guess mm. is as good as yours. Uh, so, on the portfolio, you know, we've got we've got a few to choose from. Thirty odd purchases, including your flips. What's been your best ever purchase? In terms of financially, or in terms of maybe uh, 
like learning and understand like a bit, bit of both if, right. if, if there's two properties for, for, for two different reasons that's fine uh probably the one that springs to mind uh third purchase um repossession around i'm sure you'll you'll own a few around this area norton yeah um but anyway it was it was boarded up it was on with manners and harrison um and yeah it was it was yeah repossession so it went to public notice and things like that and um yeah so that w- that was bought i think for it cost me around like 70 spent 12 and a half, 13 maybe from memory. So with uh, with the with the financing, with the fees, stamp duty, etc. Um, I can't remember what we were in for now. Uh, in the region of uh, 90-ish with the, with the work and every, everything factored in. Um, anyway, got valued up at 125. So the net loan was early 90s. So like 93-ish from memory. My math isn't very good. Whatever 75% of 125 <laughs> is. Um, yeah. 93, 94-ish. Yeah. And um, I remember, yeah, being at work at the time and getting the, the valuation come in. And I was thinking... Great feeling. Yeah. It was the first time that, like, a, a true kind of... These unicorn deals that I've heard you touch on before. Yeah. It was actually like, God, this is... this You can actually, like, pull all your money out. Now, yeah. they don't happen all the time at all. And they're obviously quite rare. Um, but, yeah, that was a realisation in the early stages that, hang on a second, like, you can pull all of your money out in certain scenarios not all the time yeah. but this process can actually work and it is scalable and you can do more and more and more yeah um so that would be one that was yeah a good deal and a good kind of learning as well doesn't get any better than that does it i don't just mean in property i mean in anything in any investment vehicle you know you've bought a property you've left no money in it it's cost you not you've got a free property yeah. and it's given you f- say 400 pounds a month in your bank it's exactly that it's ridiculous isn't it yeah yeah i don't know anything else that you could yeah yeah, that, that can can and do that. People really. wonder why we why we invest in property. I mean, there's yeah. there's, there's there's no other. I know you get huge uh, increases in the value of crypto and shares, etc. Mm. But for me, an all money out deal or nearly all money out deal, if you leave leave four or five grand in a deal and then it and then it pays you for the rest of your life or as, as long as you so, want to keep it, it's a great deal. Doesn't get any better than that. Yeah, it's, 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 it's still. I mean, it, yeah. Fortunately, with that one, it was kind of all money out plus some. But even even the ones where you're leaving those figures that you've quoted on. Over over the the decades that you own them, it's they're brilliant, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that one was probably best in terms of that happened quite early on, and it was like right, this this works, let's keep going. Yeah. Um, and then flip wise, probably one that we did in Grangefield. So there's uh, one just near the Sainsbury's there. Um, that was a flip. So that was bought for uh, one two seven five hundred, and then sold for two two seven. So it was mm-hmm. like just shy of a hundred grand uplift by 500 quid within six months. So that was, that was a flip. Yeah. Um, and what was the refurb cost on that one? Just shy of 40. Brilliant. Um, but with the cost of finance, it was sort of, it made me realize that again, these deals can be hard to, to come mm. by, but, but it was an auction purchase. It had um, a slight quirk. It was, it had a possessory title, so it wasn't title absolute. So I sort of said to my solicitor, look, when we come to, to sell this, is there going to be any, is the prospective buyer going to have any kind of funding scenarios? And, they, and the information I was given is, no, Ollie, like, I think from our understanding, not every lender will lend on it, um, but a lot of people, a lot of lenders do lend on possessory titles, so you'll be okay. So there's a bit of risk, and I reckon that's maybe why it perhaps, for when people viewed the legal pack, maybe weren't bidding. So anyway, secured it at that 127500 spent just shy of 40 um, and then sold it within six months. And it was the, yeah, just over kind of 50 grand, I think it was, 52 or something like that. And it was yeah. brilliant, like great flip. And yeah, obviously you want more of them, but they're yeah. not always knocking about. Yeah, it's amazing. Is it something as, as as small as that on the, in the legal pack would put off so many so many buyers and it's, 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 not, it's nothing, is it? You let your solicitor deal with it. You don't deal with it. You solicitor, solicitor sort it. No, exactly. Um, yeah, so they gave us the information kind of, made a decision right okay if, if we're sure we can exit this and we're not going to be lumbered with it and can't get rid of it it's it's going to work so then yeah proceeded got on with so it which one out of those two properties is your favorite then all money out deal which pays you for the rest of your life or 60 60 grand in cash uh maybe the first one you know but yeah. yes it wasn't as in terms of in terms of financially it wasn't as like lucrative it was it was it was the that gave me more of the the kind of right like let's make this happen. The the one that we did, that that one in Grangefield that was sold last year, that was more okay. Yeah, like 
decent amount of money. Yeah, you're already time. well into your journey by then. Yeah. yeah, it was it was the one. Yeah, in, in 2020, it was. Yeah, it, it's good that that happened. That all money out deal happened so early in your property. Yeah. Uh, in your property journey, I guess, because, uh, yeah, it, it instills that belief, like, bloody hell, I've read about this in books, but I can actually do it myself. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And it was, the timing was right. It was before, like, cost of materials went went up. Trades weren't, it was, bef- I can't remember when COVID kicked in. Anyway, trades weren't that busy. And it wasn't like you were, because we didn't really have any relationship to trades at that time, because we hadn't really been doing much. It was only the third deal. Um, so, the time was quite good. The values were there, um, so yeah, quite maybe quite lucky time wise. But it was it was just getting on, and maybe the third deal that we bought as a repossession was a, a public notice. I was like, what the hell is public notice? Because I hadn't come across it before. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was a good move to, to obviously buy it and yeah, get on with it and learn from it. So yeah, yeah no regrets. So they say a, a bad property is like a bad haircut. You know, over time it, it heals. So, yeah. but what's been your worst purchase. I don't want to say which purchase you regret because you probably don't regret any of them, but um, what's your worst? Is there any, any bad experiences? Uh, yeah, so w- w- there's, th- there is one. Um, Mansfield Avenue, Thornaby. You might know of the road. Unfortunately, it's, I know of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a, a few streets in Thornaby. You've got like Acton Road, Balmoral, yeah. Park Avenue, yeah. uh, and then the next street. I can't, it's like Langley Avenue. or Anyway, it's, it's Mansfield Avenue. Yeah. Um, and... Yeah, underestimated the refurb um, by a decent amount, which was, it just, things get flagged up, as you know, as you go through, and you want to do do it properly. So you end up spending more than what it was. Got slapped with pretty big down val um, on it, which obviously kind of compounded the, the problem um, and anyway left more money in the, sorry, what, what happened, we tried to sell it and then couldn't. So it was like, right, what are the other options? Right, refinance it. And anyway, yeah, the refinance valuation wasn't as good as what we'd projected. Um, so anyway, got it tenanted. It cash flowed all right, which was kind of the only good news. Um, but then we were very lucky where the tenant said that they would buy it. And anyway, the tenant bought it at kind of what we had it on the market for for six months prior to them moving in. But yeah, that, w- that was not a good deal. And it just kind of made me realize that, yeah, as, as I touched on earlier with you, Dave, like you can't, you can't pay too much for something. You've got to try and educate yourself on the, these refurbs and things like that, and don't over-egg the end valve. Um, if, if any, you've got to be conservative, and haven't you? Yeah, you see, people. You know, we're we're always on the lookout for motivated sellers, aren't we, to, to yeah. buy properties from? And I see a lot of investors become motivated buyers. They, they they create they create figures to make the deal work, and I'm like. Because people bring me stuff all the time, and I give them the yeah on the, or the nay on it for, the, for them, for them, and, and we do the refurb and manage it, whatever. And it's just like, no, where are you getting this GDV from? It's, it's not, it's not difficult. Go on, right, maybe look, you pass all price. You're twenty five grand over value. Oh yeah, but I'm going to do it nice. No, nah, just, just don't do it. Just don't yeah. do it. And you become a motivated buyer. Um, it's, a, it's a trap that you see a lot of people fall into, and, and a, a trap that I nearly fell, in, fell into in the early days as well. Was it? Yeah, because you sort of kick the can down the road, don't you? Because you sort of push yourself in this false kind of scenario where you think everything's going to be all right. But if you've got your numbers that far out on day one, it's just going to cause problems when you come to exit, when yeah. you finish. And it's difficult when you've got cash sat in the bank and you've just had a, you're on a roll, you've done four or five BRRs and there's cash sat in the bank. I get it. You know, you know, you want to go again. You want you like a, a drug addict, aren't you? Like, yeah. You want your next hit. We are drug addicts, but the property is the, <laughs> is, is the drug, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's You're good, always looking yeah. for that next hit. Yeah. But yeah, it, you, you've got to be completely realistic. And, and I'm always slack on show you out. You are as well. I always leave in a bit of a buffer. I'm always quite negative on my numbers. Um, I think you have to be. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's good. So so on a day to day basis, then what 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 are you doing on a day to day now? What's your? So at the moment, I'm quite involved with a a, a refurb that we're. We're doing um, so. It's one in in Hartburn in yeah. Stockton. Um, it's just the one on Instagram with with no walls anywhere. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Took all the, <laughs> you yeah. took open plan to the next level. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah kind of had to. The structural engineer wanted to see all put in because we wanted to move the st- staircase. Long story short, with slap bang in the middle of the house. So putting that to to one side gained more room in the this, in the kitchen. And but anyway, the the engineer wanted some steel put in and bolted together and things like that. So yeah, sort of keeping that right is uh, i've been involved with it in terms of being hands-on um quite a lot recently but yeah still still viewing 
getting offers out there um, and trying to yeah find the, find the next deal. I mean, th- there's other with that same seller that we spoke about last year um, that we bought seven from. He's still wanting to gradually just because he, he wants the capital to put into other businesses that yep. he's got. He's still looking to to kind of offload um, parts of his portfolio. So there is that coming up, um, but we're looking more sort of like March or April time. Um, so yeah, keen to find the next deal and yeah, yeah, more just continue to build the portfolio really, Dave. Cool. So you've never done any property education then, have you? No, you've never been through any? No, s- no, similar to you. And I know when you spoke to, to Theo, I, I don't think he has either. No. Just same as you guys. Yeah. I, just, Learn on the job. Yeah, that and um, podcasts. Yeah. Reading. Yeah. Um, there's, there's so much information out there. And it's, there is. It's yeah. obviously got better as the years have gone on. I think probably when you started, though, I'm not saying that you... Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I got a telegram once. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the education probably wasn't out there as much no. 10 years ago when, or when you kicked off. Yeah, 20, um, 21 years ago now, yeah. Oh, was it? Yeah, show me, show me age there. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, we're we're lucky like now because there's so much going on. So if you wanted to to learn these things, I know there probably are some decent courses out there, but the cost of them versus, my view personally, I might be wrong. You're better off learning through listening to podcasts, reading books, etc., than you are shelling out. Some of these courses are tens of thousands, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which that's you're talking that would get you that would get you going on your first deal wouldn't it yeah so you're better off using that money first deal yeah and doing your own reading and but yeah having said that i can't i can't make a proper comment or judgment on it because i haven't really yeah. done one they might be great some of them would be really good i think some of them maybe not so much but yeah yeah i think that people do spend fortunes in it and and, and some people I, I know have done very, very well out of them. They they see it as money well spent. They actually see it that the course fees as cheap because of what they've achieved. Mm. But I'd say ninety five percent. You know, you, you get all the all the education in the world, but you still got to go out and do it, haven't you? You got to take the action. Yeah. Ninety five percent of people are just looking for a, a, a magic pill. They just think they're going to do a course and it's going to make them rich. You don't realise you've then got to graft your graft your balls off for yeah. twenty years. You know, even though you've got that knowledge. So I think a lot of people do well out of mentorships. I think that's that's. They probably get um, it's more cost effective. I think you get more time with with, with a mentor rather than just doing a, a, a six month course and yeah and and then, then they send you on your merry way type of thing. But yeah, I mean it's I'm the same as you. I'm a big reader. I still continue to read every yeah. day. What's the best best book you've read? It's a bit uh, it's cliche is the right word. It's 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 a classic, and you probably know what I'm going to say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I don't even really need to say it. But it's uh, it's yeah, Rich Dad Poor Dad by uh, it's Robert Kiyosaki, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, I wasn't at the time a big reader and I still struggle at times now to read just because when you're working late and things like that and yeah so I'm trying to read more but that was a book that I genuinely there's not many books I could say it about but I, I, I genuinely like did struggle to put it down and it was yeah what, what I got back from that about not trading your time for money assets paying for your liabilities all this sort of stuff that you hear like thrown about but it I do agree with the main points of of that book uh and I know a lot of people do read it and probably would say the same sort of thing as what you and I believe are the, the good outcomes of having a read of that book. Um, but Yeah, I think it's it's so popular because it's 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 explain everything's explained to you in such simplistic terms. Mm. Um, the story of the two dads. I don't know how genuine the story is, but the t- story of the two two dads, you know, it's it's easy to imagine it, it's easy to yeah, to, to pick up the lessons through the story. I think we, I think as humans, we pick up lessons through stories a lot easier than just reading bullet points and, and facts. I've got my nephew Matthew Stern with me at the moment, All right. and he's he's halfway through it. He's eighteen. I'm in a bit of a mood with him actually because his, his car alarms kept me awake all night. But <laughs> but uh, but that's another story. But uh, but he, and even he he can't put it down. He, really? like, he yeah. started two weeks ago. So I think for any beginner starting out, it's a great. It just explains why why, yeah. why why we do the things we do for him. Reading it at eighteen, it's yeah a great time to read. And if he's got an interest in in property and, and yeah getting started and things like that, there, there's, that's a, a fantastic and probably one of the best books you can read in terms of from a general point of view. Is yeah not maybe trading your your time for money, having these assets that pay you an income and maybe appreciating value over over a period of time. Yeah, um, yeah, it's great. Yeah. So um, one piece of advice for a, a property investor starting out today, what 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 advice would that be? It's got to be to to get started, hasn't it? It's um, there's a lot of people that are a lot brighter than what I am that talk themselves out of it, and 
if they just took the steps and got on with it, that's the game changer, isn't it? It's, it's, so yeah, my advice would be yeah, just just to get started, do 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 your homework and, and your reading and to improve your knowledge and, and understanding. But then it's the, the the main thing is to to take the first step, get viewings out there, get the offers going, and yeah, just to get on with your your first purchase. And then if it's for you, brilliant, you can build upon that, buy more, do more deals. And if it's not for you then there's ways to exit that and come out of it and say, yeah, it's not for me, I didn't enjoy it. But if you're wanting to have a crack and get going, then you yep. need to to start, don't you? So my advice would be to, to kick it off here. Yeah. So if you could, last question, mate, which I ask everyone again, uh, if you could start all over again, what would you do differently, if anything? Uh, I'm going back to what I said, and it's to, I would have left the day job sooner. Yep. That was because what I've noticed is obviously having more time to be in the business and the growth that has happened since um, since that has been a lot more than what it was when I was stuck there. So for me, yeah, just jumping earlier rather than sort of me thinking, oh, s- safety net and oh, just keep it going for for another six months or a year. Yeah. Um, it would have been to take the plunge earlier and yeah. just, just get on with it. Yeah, I think every guest I've had on have asked the same questions because they are uh, very open-ended questions and it's quite an in- interesting question, but... 90% of the answers have been just take the risk, just take that initial yeah. risk, um, you know, have the kahunas to just take that first step. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's the, the main message that, that that we need to get across to people. But um, Yeah, 100%. Ollie, it's been absolutely fantastic having you on, mate. I'm sure we will keep in touch uh, up for, for the long term now. Um, and I'm really enjoying your progress on the socials, etc. Can't wait to see, uh, see where your journey takes you. If people want to reach out to you what's the best place yeah so instagram um would probably be the best the best portal um just yeah type my name ollie ollie hindle um i'm not sure on what the what the handle is but uh, anyway if you type the name in it will yeah i'll be there and yeah any advice any anything like that just uh, just get in touch and uh, yeah thanks for having us on dave really enjoyed it mate no worries at all mate uh, if you are listening to this or watching this uh on the youtube channel please do like subscribe and follow it really does help Until next time, take care.